Hi everyone, I'm Steve and this is Little Plasti People. In today's video I'll be taking a quick run through a simple example of how I approach 3D sculpting in SketchUp. Now I say sculpting but it's more CAD or modelling at this level as there aren't really any organic shapes in this project. If you're looking to sculpt organic shapes I'd highly recommend taking a look at programs such as ZBrush as these are much more suited to organic sculpting. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video, so let's jump right in. So, as you may have guessed, I use SketchUp quite a bit for non-organic modelling, and ZBrush for more organic stuff. SketchUp arguably may not be the best program out there, but it's what I know and it's what I've been using for over a decade now in my day job as an architectural designer. But if I were to make some alternate suggestions or look to master a new piece of software for this kind of thing, I'd probably take a look at Blender. It's free, very powerful, and most importantly, its use is pretty widespread. So there's a lot of learning resources out there for you. But anyway, one of the first things you should understand about SketchUp is that although it's a very useful and easy to learn tool, it does tend to rely on plugins and third party apps to really shine. Over the years, I've built a library of useful tools and we'll go over a few of these as we move along. With that said, this video is intended as more of a high level view of my process and approach and is just to give you an idea of how achievable simple projects can be. Knowing how to create simple models can be particularly useful if you have access to a 3D printer and want to make a few custom parts for yourself. It can really open up a whole new world of conversion and kit bashing. Right, so first thing we do when opening up a new project in SketchUp is to select the units. I use millimeters as this is easy for me to scale from and to work to. I even have a profile set up for mini modeling. Now, although we've set the units to millimetres, we're going to draw everything upscaled by 100. For example, we'll input 10 millimetres as 1000. We do this for a few reasons, chief among which is SketchUp's occasional issue with dealing with any details smaller than 1mm. Now, I don't know why this is, and it's been like it for years across multiple revisions, but in my experience, it's just good practice to start this way and we'll simply scale down later. For this walkthrough, we'll stick with something pretty simple, the ubiquitous barrel. First I start with the rings which will surround the barrel's main body. Selecting the circle tool and increasing the circle detail from 24 segments, which is SketchUp's default, to 100 will give us a nice smooth cylinder to start with. Now less segments does mean less geometry, which then means a smaller file size, but skimping on segments can run the risk of producing models with visible edges in places where you don't want them. I've pre-measured a similarly scaled barrel for reference with a set of calipers, so I know we're looking for a diameter of 17.5mm or a radius of around 875 You don't always have to be this accurate or precise. I just find it's good practice to have something of an accurate and relatable scale to start from. As often, you may end up adding minute details which can't really be rendered with a resin printer or simply are just too small to enjoy painting. Once the circle's drawn, we can extrude it into a 3D shape using the push-pull tool. And so I drag this up by around 2.25 millimeters and use a round corner plugin to chamfer the edges. It's important to ensure that each object or volume that you create is contained within either a group or a component, as this stops any of the geometry from sticking to each other in ways that you may not be expecting. We can now look at a similar process for the barrel's main body, drawing another 100-sided circle and dragging it up to the desired height with the push-pull tool, before offsetting a line from the edge and hollowing it out, again with the push-pull tool. So the whole barrel will end up hollow, which will help us save on printing materials. I do the same for the ring before making it a component and duplicating it up the barrel. The great thing about components in SketchUp is that any change that you make to one will transfer to all the other instances in the model. This is a great time saver and something that I'd recommend including in your workflow from very early on. Now we have a very basic barrel shape, it's time to start adding a little detail. So I start making some studs for the rings that go around the barrel, drawing a small circle and extruding it as before. I use the round corner tool again to round the cylinder edges. Just like before I make these studs components, before copying them around the circumference of the ring at equal spacing. Now SketchUp allows you to multiply or divide an object move between two points, making equal spacing easy. Ensuring the studs are components means that I can change the size and orientation of all the studs just by changing one. This can really help making edits nice and fast. You can also make some of these components unique, which separates them from the rest if you need to make changes to a single or a small group of them. What I should mention here is that it's good practice to make sure that all of your work is watertight. Checking periodically can really save time later. 
This is important when it comes to printing, as any holes in the model or stray edges can confuse the process and cause issues or even failed prints later down the line. Luckily, SketchUp has a tool specifically for this called Solid Inspector. This will automatically check any selected component or group and let you know if you need to clean it up. It will even have a go at doing this for you, but it doesn't always get this 100% correct. Once I'm happy with the stud and ring placement, I make the top and the bottom rings unique, removing any of the unnecessary studs before moving on to the lid. I decide to make this an insert rather than part of the barrel itself. My thinking here is that it will allow for some more options later, but it could also be combined to make it a one part print. After some basic detailing of the lid using the same tools that we've already covered, we can move on to detailing the rest of the barrel. We're not gonna go crazy here, so I just add a simple tap and a gauge, again, utilizing the same basic tools as before. With these details in place, I make a copy of the whole piece and vary the ring placement to create a quick second variation. And there we have it a simple set of barrels almost ready for printing. For which, you guessed it, I use another plugin, specifically an STL import and export plugin. And this does exactly what it says on the tin. It exports any of the selected geometry to an STL file ready for printing. Now you could leave these here, but with a little practice and familiarity with some of the other tools, you could add more details. For example, signage, as SketchUp will generate 3D text from most of your installed fonts different inserts like ammo or bubbling waste and bent lids and so much more. Now I know this walkthrough hasn't been overly detailed as I very much just want to show you guys what can be achieved relatively quickly without too much training or experience with the hope that those of you that already are or are looking into 3D printing are encouraged to maybe consider having a pop at making your own custom parts. Be careful though, it can become a bit of a hobby all to itself. If you'd like to take a look at these barrels and the extras that I've shown here, they're all available for free in the links in the description below. I've included both supported and unsupported STLs ready for printing, along with the raw SketchUp files, so you can inspect each element and make some of your own additions. If this has inspired you to take a look at SketchUp, there are a huge amount of learning resources out there on the tubes, but feel free to drop me a message and I'll do what I can to help. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. But until next time, bye!